Welcome to the Mount Pleasant Missionary Baptist Church of Orlando's MTP Live Virtual Fellowship. At Mount Pleasant, we are committed to connection. We are grateful to God for your presence. Today you will be blessed by an uplifting devotional reading and prayer, as well as being ignited by the praise and worship of our music ministry. Then you will be encouraged by the Word of God as it is explained by our pastor, Dr. J. Roy Morrison. Stay tuned at the end of this presentation for important news about our MTP Connect programs. Good morning. I'm Deaconess Barbara Woods Morrison. I'll be sharing uh, Psalms 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his, bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff, which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. May the Lord bless the readers and hearers and doers of his most holy word. Church, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, our God in heaven, our Lord who, who looks high and who sees low, our God who is just in control of everything, Father God, we come into your presence right now with just a heart of thanksgiving. God, we thank you because you've been good to us. God, we thank you because you've kept us. God, we thank you because you love us. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we recognize that uh, we have some uncertain times right now. Father God, we recognize that we have individuals that are sick in their body. Father God, we recognize that we have those that don't know where their next paycheck is going to come from. God, we recognize that there may be uh, people and families that, that don't know how they're going to put food on their tables right now. But dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come in your presence recognizing that you are a provider, recognizing that you are a healer, and recognizing that any situation, uh, you can turn it around. So Father God, anything that, that is going on in our lives right now, we just leave it all at your feet. And we recognize that you have the power to do marvelous and miraculous things. Dear Heavenly Father, right now, we just pray that you would continue to touch the Mount Pleasant Church. Father God, we are going through a, a season of, uh, of death and loss, dear Heavenly Father. Uh, but we know to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And so, God, we thank you right now uh, for those of our family, for those of our loved ones that have transitioned, that have transitioned into your care. Dear Heavenly Father, right now, we just uh, pray that you would continue to uplift our church. We pray that you would continue to uplift every need and, and, and everything that, that, that is needed in this perilous time. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we recognize that we can't do it ourselves and that we must depend on you. And Father God, we just come right now asking that you would forgive us of our sins, that you would make us right and that you would make us holy to be in your presence and be in your sight. And Father God, as I end this prayer, I just pray right now that you would just uh, continue to bless us, uplift our hearts, uplift our spirits as we go into this time of worship and praise, because we recognize for you alone are worthy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>
morning and welcome on this beautiful second Sunday into uh, the sanctuary of the Mount Pleasant Church of Orlando. I want to remind you this is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Listen, on today I want to share with you a word of inspiration that is entitled Built for Adversity. I want to talk about built for adversity or built for challenges, built for problems. You know, for the last few weeks uh, during our Faith Connect Bible study, uh, I've been teaching a series of lessons that have originated out of the Gospel of Matthew chapters 5, 6, and 7. Interestingly, God would have me today to bring to you a word of encouragement uh, from Matthew chapter number 7. So would you get your, your Bible apparatus, whether it be paper, iPhone, iPad, and meet me now in Matthew chapter number 7. I want to read uh, in your hearing verses 24 through 29 of Matthew chapter number 7. Of course, I'm reading from the New King James Version translation of the Bible, and these are the words of Christ. Listen, if you will. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock and the rain descended, the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it did not fall for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. And so it was when Jesus had ended these sayings that the people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. The word of God for the people of God. Again, I want to talk about built for adversity. As I was preparing this message, um, <laughs> it's quite funny, I, I thought instantly about the slogan that that Ford came up with some 42 years ago for its trucks. Ford has a slogan that says, uh, built Ford tough, built Ford tough. The implication of the slogan is that the Ford truck is designed to be tough. It's designed for adversity. It is, it is designed for various terrain. It's designed not just for the short haul, but it's designed for the, for the long haul. As a matter of fact, I personally own a Ford truck and, and that truck has some 200,000 miles on it, which suggests that the truck is built to endure. As I was preparing this message that, that came to the forefront of my mind because in this text, Jesus is, is discussing this very issue. And the question that I want to, to ask those of you who are viewing me on today is this. Is your life built for adversity? Is your life built for what we are currently 
experiencing in this world? Is your life built for the trials and the tribulations that are associated with daily living? I, I simply want to, to share with you today some pointers concerning your life being built for adversity. Some may ask the question, well, Pastor, what, what do I really need if I'm to have a life that is, is built for adversity? Examine this text with me, if you will, here in Matthew chapter number 7. The first thing that I see in the text is this, is that if your life is to be built for adversity, then your life must be built utilizing the power of God. If your life, again, is to meet with adversity and to overcome the adversity of life, your life must be built utilizing the power of God. Notice what Jesus says uh, to his disciples here in the 24th verse. He says, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine, and does them, he says, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. The power, the power, the power in your life that will cause you to overcome the adversities and the problems uh, rest in the very essence of the sayings of God. What, what Jesus is saying unto them is you've got to be able to follow my instruction. I want to suggest to you, my friend, that you and I, if we're to overcome uh, the adversities of life, we've got to listen to what God says. We've got to recognize that being children of God, that it behooves us to be in tune with the voice of God. We must be mindful that the adversary, who is the enemy, Satan himself, seeks to divest our attention away from God. But notice, if you will, that our power is connected to what God says. I think I ought to tell you that's good news on today, just as God spoke into existence all of creation, just as God spoke into existence everything that we see with our natural and physical eye. God speaks into our lives. Isn't it wonderful news to know that all he has to do is say the word and our lives are empowered. All he must do is say the word. Jesus is atop of the mountain of Beatitudes. He, he is instructing his disciples in what uh, is historically called the Sermon on the Mount. He has deposited into their lives his sayings, and it is from these sayings that he empowers powers them to be able to overcome adversity. But then secondly, when you examine this text, you come to recognize if you are to be built for adversity, get this, you must also know the principles of God. Right, right here in this text, listen to what Jesus says. Jesus says again in verse number 24, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. Watch this. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. Notice that Jesus says unto them, there are some principles that you must follow, that you must obtain in order to overcome the adversity in your life. First of all, you've got to listen to what I say, but then second of all, you've got to be able to build your life 
upon the rock. Notice on today, my beloved, that the greatest principle that any of us can uh, exercise as it relates to the adversity in our life is to know that come what may, life is going to have its share of challenges and problems. But when the times are good, you ought to be building upon the rock. Well, who is the rock? What is the rock? What is the premise of this principle? The premise of this principle is Jesus himself. I'm mindful of what Isaiah 28 and 16 says. It says this, I've laid in Zion a stone, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. And the one who builds or believes upon this rock, this stone, will never be shaken. I want to share with you today, adversity is certain to come, but you need to exercise and know the principles of God. You need to build upon the rock. You need to recognize that everything else is going to fail. You, you need to recognize, just as in this text, this individual built his life upon a rock. It also denotes another fellow who built his life upon sand and when the storm came and when the adversity raised up the Bible says that his house fell down his house not only fell down but it greatly fell down in other words there were not even any pieces remaining or left why because the adversity tore up his house I suggest to your own today child of God that the enemy seeks to blow he seeks to bring storms in your life. But the wonderful and the good news is that if you exercise the principles of God and build up on the word of God, when the winds begin to blow and when the adversity comes your way, you'll be able to stand. And having done all to stand, you'll keep on standing because you are practicing the principles of God. But then thirdly, when I examine this text, if you're to have a life that is built uh, for adversity, watch this. You must build your life toward the purposes of God. The purposes of God. No, notice, notice if you will in this text that the text illustrates that the purpose of God is for the believer and the disciple to withstand the storm. Notice, my beloved, that what Jesus is pouring into them is this, is that the storms of life will be great, that the storms of life will burden you down, that the storms of life will cause you to have struggles but be mindful of the fact that God has a purpose child of God right there in the comfort of your home today whatever you're going through whatever storm whatever adversity whatever problem is going on in your life you need to know that it has a purpose and we know that all things work together for good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. You need to know that that storm is to temper you. That storm is to cause you to be rooted and anchored in your faith. That storm is designed to build you up, to grow you up, to mature you in the things of God. And that storm on the other side is to cause you to be able to have a testimony and when you look in the rearview mirror of your life you not only can look at where the Lord brought you from but you're able to testify if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side then I surely would not have made it through so there is a purpose there is a purpose for the adversity in your life. But then finally in this text, not only do we see the power of God, not only do we come to understand the principles of God, not only do we see that adversity has a 
purpose. But we also see that adversity causes the promises of God to come to fruition. Notice what Jesus says in verse, or the text says rather, in verse number 28. And so it was when Jesus had ended these sayings that the people were astonished at his teaching. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Notice that this word authority suggests unto them that along and associated with his teaching, watch this, was the fulfillment of the promise of that that he taught. The inference in the text on today, child of God, is to encourage us. It is to let us know that we are to put faith in God, that we are to consider the things of God versus the things of life. We need to recognize on today that the things of life are perplexities. The things of life are pressures. The things of life are problems. But we need to know that we have the assurance and the promise from the Lord Jesus Christ himself that if we build upon his word, if we exercise and operate our lives under the unction and the direction of his power if we practice his principles daily and if we are mindful of the fact that there is a purpose at work in all that we're going through that God promises us that he'll never leave us nor forsake us and so let the winds come let the problems come let the strong winds blow let all of the trials come our way. It's all right because we're built for adversity. Greater is he who's within us than he that is in the world. Greater is the spirit of the living God who lives and dwells in us. He's able, I tell you, he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond that that we can think of or even imagine. Why? Because you and I are built for adversity. Yes, COVID-19, built for it. Economic struggles, built for it. Yes, personal and financial ills built for it. Family crisis built for it. Even the church not being able to enter into the sanctuary in the building. It's all right. We're built for it. Why? Because we're built for adversity. And the Bible says we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. Well, child of God, I simply want to encourage you to know that you're built for adversity. Well, listen, as you've listened to this message on today, there may be those of you who are viewing who need to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. You've been going through adversity, one problem after the other, and you, your question is, will it ever end? I suggest to you that the answer lies in Jesus Christ. If you've never accepted him as your personal Savior, our Lord of your life, right now is a good time. Would you right there in the comfort of your home or wherever you may be viewing, bow your head with me and repeat this little prayer after me. Lord, forgive me of my sins. I accept Jesus as my personal Savior. Lord, take my life and make me who you want me to be. From this moment forward, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Listen, if you prayed that prayer, I'm delighted to tell you that you are saved. Maybe you're viewing today and you live in the Orlando area and you're without a church home. I want to invite you to become a part of the church family here at the Mount Pleasant Church of Orlando. We are the pleasant place where the worship is exciting and the word is explained. If you've made a decision today to either give your life to Christ or to become a part of our church family, would you do me the good pleasure of contacting our church office at area code 407-841-3658 and let our staff know of the decision that you've made. They'll be delighted to speak with you 
and it will be a joy to have you to become a part of us. Well, child of God, remember, regardless of what the enemy throws your way, you are built for adversity. Right there, right now, take a moment and give God the praise, give God the glory and the honor because you know that he has built you for the storms of life. Well, would you please lend your attention now to the voice of MTP Live as she shares with you opportunities to remain connected to the Mount Pleasant Church of Orlando. And until we meet again, shalom and peace. We appreciate you tuning in to this week's MTP Live virtual worship experience. We pray this service has been a blessing to you. At Mount Pleasant Missionary Baptist Church of Orlando, we are committed to connection. We have several convenient opportunities for you to stay connected all week long. Connect with us in the MTP Prayer Room every Tuesday and Thursday morning from 6 to 6.30 a.m., and Tuesday evenings at 7.30 p.m. Study the Word of God with us during our MTP Life Sunday School classes and our MTP Faith Connect Bible Study. MTP Life is Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. via Zoom. MTP Faith Connect is presented every Wednesday at 12 noon on Facebook Live. On Sunday mornings at 8.30 a.m., you can tune your radio to WOKB 1680 AM to hear the anointed voices of our music ministry and an inspirational sermon by our pastor, Dr. J. Roy Morrison. We'll be back next Sunday morning at 10 AM with another installment of our MTP Live Worship Experience. <laughs>